Hello there Vector fans, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video we're going to take a look at Paper Tear Effects inside of Illustrator 2019. Now to do that we need to create a couple of containers that will start off as rectangles. We're going to use the pencil tool to actually create the tear portion of the artwork and then separate the um, rectangles into two halves, put photographs into them to create the tear effect. So to start out with I need one large rectangle. So I'm going to go over to my tools panel, left click on the rectangle tool and then simply left click in the middle of my artboard here to bring up the tools dialog box. So the rectangle I'm going to make is going to be slightly smaller than my artboard here which is uh, A4. So in millimetres this will be 190 millimetres wide and then tall it will be 277. Hit the return key to make that um, generate that rectangle. I'll then switch to my selection tool and then move that over into the middle of the artboard like so. And uh, that will create, as it does usually inside of Illustrator, a, uh, a rectangle that has a white fill and a black stroke. So at the moment, this is fine. You know, can see the outside area of the rectangle. The next step then is to create where we want the tear. The best tool to do that with will be the pencil tool. It allows for some really nice kind of organic hand gesture type lines. So to do that, you can tap the N key on the keyboard. Uh, in the tools panel here, you'll find it buried underneath probably the paintbrush and then I'll click on the pencil tool. It's also worth double checking before you ever use the pencil tool on every situation to hover your cursor over it and double left click and call up the uh, tools dialog box. So in here we want to make sure that when we are creating lines with the pencil tool that they are accurate to our hand gestures. This slider in here for fidelity, you can see with mine, is usually set to accurate because I like more organic kind of hand gestures. I don't like the smoothing so much on my pencil tool. Uh, it is usually set to the center in there, sort of halfway between two, you know, you get a middle of the road option. But for me and in this tutorial, we need this set to accurate so that when we move the mouse across the artboard, it's going to really pick up all the tiny little twists and turns that the mouse will make when it's going across my, uh, my desk here. Uh, and then with that done, I will go down to the bottom and click OK. Now I'm going to position my pencil tool uh, around about halfway down the artboard in here. And then I'm going to click and hold down the left mouse button. So with the pencil tool, that's what you really have to do. You've got to keep the left mouse button held down the whole time, to be perfectly honest. So click and hold down the mouse and then drag. Now I'm going to draw with my pencil tool some very kind of agitated lines. I'm going to try not to go too high, too low. I want this to be a fairly straight line. So obviously it's a, it's a paper tear uh, and we want this to be fairly straight, but with a little bit of agitation in it as well. When I have crossed both sides of that original rectangle with pencil tool, I will release the left mouse button. That gives me a stroke effectively. And if I pick up my zoom tool, let's just zoom in nice and close to that over at the side in here. So that's fine. Um, I will switch to my selection tool and that will still be selected. I will go over to the properties panel and I will increase the stroke weight there to let's go for six points in there. So it's going to give me a smooth line. Now, obviously, tears have lots of kind of fine, broken detail on them. So in order to be able to progress this, we need to turn this stroke. And you can see all the anchor points in here running right through the middle. That's our stroke appearance for the black line around the outside. We need to turn this into a solid shape. Now, to do that, you can go to the object menu, go down the list to path and then choose outline stroke. So that will take whatever the stroke appearance is and turn it into a physical shape. When I click on that, notice that the anchor points jump to the outside now. So loads of anchor points in there, solid shape. The other thing that we need to do then is to roughen up the edge of this pencil mark inside of here. So to do that, I am going to go back over to the properties panel, click on the FX icon, go down to distort and transform and then choose roughen. And as with all Illustrator dialog boxes, the preview checkbox is usually turned off, so I'll turn that on. And then we get this kind of crazy looking effect inside of here, which is nothing like what we need. So first things first is I do want to leave the point set to corners. I will turn on absolute in here so it's not quite as wild. And then for size, well, this needs to be set really low in here. I mean, if you see, if I keep increasing the size, then it does all kinds of crazy things. So I will swipe over that. Just to start off, we've got to 0 0.5 and this will be set to millimeters because that's what my document units are set to. And then I'll click in the field underneath. You see there, we've got some agitation on the path. 
but what I'd like to do is add the detail in there. So I keep dragging that along and to be perfectly honest, we need tons of detail. So I'm going to drag that right across the far right hand side in there like so. It is then a case of taking a look at where the path has been agitated on the outside. Do you like the effect that's on there? Do you think it's too much? Not quite enough. At this point, then it really comes down to the final uh, slider in here uh, size. I, again, I would suggest you don't drag the slider around in here. It's very sensitive and we're working with really tiny units in there. So I'm going to swipe over that and then type in say 0.3 and then click in the other field lower down to see that update. With that done, then I'm fairly happy with that. That's all good to go. And then I'll click OK. Now that is an effect. It's not a physical thing. And just to try and um, kind of show you how that works, take a look at the red line. That is the original pencil stroke. Notice that the black area is the effect of our path. So this isn't a physical attribute. It's just an effect. We will now have to turn that into a physical path, the appearance. So to do that, path still selected. I'll go to object and then you can choose expand appearance. So that will, in other words, turn the appearance into a physical path. Do that. And there we go. We now have anchor points around the effect. That is good. I will then go to the view menu, go down the list to fit art body window. And then well, we have tons of anchor points. So the whole thing's going to look red at the moment. I'll click away just to show you what we've got in there like so. Now that's the path. I am going to select both the rectangle and the, uh, the agitated pencil lines and then left click once more on the rectangle. That'll make that the key object over in my align section of the properties panel. You will notice that the mode now has changed uh, with a symbol of a key. How clever is that? And then the mode is set to align to key object. So the pencil sketch line will move and align to the rectangle because the rectangle is the key object. I will then click to make sure that's centered. I'll also click to make sure that that is centered both horizontally and vertically as well. So when I click on that one, that now is right in the middle of that rectangle. All good to go. So that effectively is going to cut a hole through our rectangle. And the way that we do that at this point then is again, make sure that both objects are selected and we can't really use the options here that are in Pathfinder. We've got some very basic options in the top up there. For those, what we'd have to do is to find the option we're looking for. You have to click on the three dots for more options. And then we see kind of a fuller pop up of what would be the properties panel. And from here, I'm going to choose divide. And the reason why I'm going to choose that is when I click on it here. So I'll just hit the return key to make that pop up disappear and then click back on here. This will usually become a group. So again, under quick actions and properties panel, I'll choose ungroup so that I can get to each of these objects separately. And you'll notice now that I have there, if I pick up my zoom tool and zoom in, just to give you an indication of this, that uh, essentially our black uh, jagged line in there has been used to cut across. And if I even go further in this and to show you under outline mode, anything essentially that overlapped in those original two objects now has sliced and diced the artwork up. So everything is now separate. The little line on the outside because the rectangle came down here that's been separated out i can actually pull that to the side i have got um here that's my kind of my cut line my uh, agitated line that we drew before and in the top section well we have that is the top section of the cut in there that's the top half of the rectangle this bit is the bottom half of the original rectangle so all those regions where they overlapped have basically become cutting lines and it's all been sliced and diced apart I will go back to the view menu and then choose preview. I will also then just go back a couple of steps. I don't want to sort of move those apart really. I want them exactly where they were, uh, except that I will click on that portion there. Get rid of it. We don't need that. I'll use the scroll bar to scroll all the way along over here. Click on this one, delete that one as well. That's no longer necessary. And then I'll go to view and then I will choose fit artboard in window. Like so. Excellent. Now, next stage then is to bring the photograph in. So I'm going to go to file, choose place. Now in my folder here, I have an image called Woodlands. I'm going to make sure that's linked and then click on place. Now this should be, if I left click just up here, A4. And then with that, what I will do is I will right click on that photograph. I will go down to arrange and then choose send to back in there just to make sure that, yep, fill all of those shapes in there at the background. It's larger than those shapes, which is good. 
And then from here, I will copy that photograph. So edit and choose copy. And then what I need to do, because it's at the back, I can then click on this top section, the rectangle, hold down the shift key, shift and left click on the photograph, and then turn this into a clipping mask. So up to object, then down to clipping mask and choose make. It will say uh, the top object is very complex because, uh, well, hey, we've got jagged pencil lines and 10 sections on it. So it will give us this dialog box option in here. You can click on yes to that. That's not a problem. And we've now put the photograph in the top section. I'm going to, for now, just hide that. So it'll be called clipping group. I'll hide that for now, then go to edit and then choose paste in place to make sure I put the uh, photograph copy of which in exactly the same place as the original. I'll then have to hover over it, right click, and then choose arrange and center back. Again, I'll hover my cursor over the bottom half of the rectangle and shift left, the left click on that. So I have the photograph lower half of the rectangle selected. And you'll notice each time that I've made this clipping mask that I've put the photograph at the back. That's absolutely critical because what we have here are two components. You have the contents, which is the photograph, and the thing that it goes into is called a container. And that has to be at the front and it really has to be a vector object, which is what we've got here. So again, object, clipping mask and make. And again, we get the same message again. Click on yes to that saying to us because this uh, rectangle has got a very kind of detailed jagged edge across the top. It might take a few seconds to show that term, um, that kind of edit in there. So that's all good. I can then uh, click on this lower section in here and I'm just going to move that down away from uh, the original tear line in there and then go back into the layers panel and turn on the visibility for the upper half in there like so. So we have the tear. That's all looking good. I will then select this shape. I'm going to zoom in there and um, that's going to be the kind of exposed edge of the paper. When you get a tear, you'll get one edge that kind of looks quite fairly clean and the other half of the tear will show more paper uh, and a, a, a portion where the image has been ripped away from the side of the page in there. So with this then, I'm going to go to my properties panel, click on fill, change the fill of that to a very light white. Not, not pure white, it has to be an off white in there like so. Click away and then we have that appearance in there like so. You could even go a little bit darker possibly. If I click on that, just to experiment, if I click on that, we'll, we'll stick with that just for now. And then what we have to do is make sure that is at the back. So click on that, select it, right click, arrange, and then choose send to back in there like so. With that done, I will then click and drag across those two shapes, the top half of the photograph and the tear line. And then I will go to object and choose group from there. I'll then go with that grouped to the FX icon, go down to stylize, choose drop shadow, have to turn the preview checkbox and then see what results InDesign gives us. So yeah, we've got quite a big drop shadow in here. Now I'm going to set the X and Y offsets um, to offsets, really our coordinates. X goes from left to right in your document artboard. Y goes up and down the artboard. So this is really where the shadow is offset from, from the original object. I'm going to set that one to zero and then hit the uh, tab key on the keyboard and then hit the other one to zero as well and then click in the blur field in there just to see what we get with that one. So I'm just going to tap that down, knock that down to one inside of there like so and then I'm going to click on OK. Click away from there and then zoom out touch like so and I, I will click on the lower half and from here if I click on effects it doesn't give me the option to apply the last effect in there which is very disappointing. I could though go up to the effect menu and choose apply drop shadow, which will apply exactly the same drop shadow settings that I saw a minute ago that I took you through in there. Click away from that. And there we go. We have our paper tear effect. If you like me at this moment behind think that actually there's probably too much white edge in there, that's not a problem. Pick up my zoom tool, zoom into that region nice and close. Tap the V key on the keyboard to get the selection tool. And then I will double left click on my top group in there and that will go into isolation mode which will allow me to edit the contents of the group click on that shape just nudge it upwards a little bit in there just to uh, tuck it up behind the photograph and if i'm happy with that i'll hit the escape key click away from there and then i will go to uh, view and choose uh, to fit artboarding window 
and we get that effect in there like so. So it's quite convincing. Um, I do have here another layer in here, which is for text. And if I click on that top object, the group, move it upwards, move the other section down in there, I've got a text and a logo reveal inside of there like so. So there we have it, folks. We have a paper tear effect inside of Adobe Illustrator CC 2019, all done with essentially vector containers that we can put our photograph inside. And um, and so there we have it, folks. That's how you create a paper tear effect inside of Adobe Illustrator CC. And so there we have it, folks. That's how you create a paper tear effect inside of Adobe Illustrator CC 2019. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more content in the future, don't forget you can hit the subscribe button. If you want to see all the videos that come from this channel, then you can hit the uh, alerts button and then you'll be notified every time a new video is posted onto the Create Frontiers channel. Thank you so much, folks. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and I'll see you in the next video.